It says we need to search the archive. Scotland Yard, that's where they would have taken the body. Let's go there first and do the autopsy. I asked Inspector Lestrade to take Montague Dunn's body to Scotland Yard. It's ready for autopsy then. Wonder if his personal belongings are here. It looks like they are, so let's check out his personal belongings on our way down. This watch is of great value. Hmm. A membership card for the London Crest Club. A beautiful feather pen of a good make. Don't name everybody, just name me. All right, now let's go. All right, let's do this. First of all, let us carry out an external examination. There are no suspicious marks upon the chest. Let us finish our external examination so that we can proceed with the autopsy. Smash in the head somewhere. There is an injury to the skull, most probably caused by the fall in the water lily greenhouse. The vessels and the pupil of the eye appear quite normal. Mm. The air from the lungs carries a faint floral aroma Hmm. I'll tell that if he's been dead this long. No redness, stings, or bruises. Nothing suspicious here. Now, let us examine the internal organs. Hey. The heart's blood vessels show no pathological signs. Boys or something kids play with, that's what it looks like. The heart tissue shows no visible pathological signs. Really, I want the lungs. I wonder if it was an inhalant. Here we go. Hi, lungs. The lungs are congested and edematous. You know what I was wondering? Ah. The tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged, most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. Liver. The liver is enlarged. It would seem mm. that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. Sad. The liver tissue is brown. There are no visible pathological signs. Okay. Stomach. The stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. Mm -hmm. 
there is a small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before his death. <laughs> About the intestines. My suspicions have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning, plant poisoning to be more exact. You mean... Yes, it is murder. You should form Lestrade. Yes, but do remember, Watson, that I discovered the murder. The challenge is mine. The challenge, Holmes? We need to locate that deadly plant. Such a perfect murder appeals to me. <laughs> murder of any kind appeals to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also have the people working at Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke with Mr. Hamish. Should we bring them all here for interrogation? No. A few innocuous questions. I was like, yes, suffice, bring them all. As well as a discreet delve into their personal affairs. Yes, Watson. It is time now to open the doors. Even those in the staff building. I suppose that is necessary. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> More than a little. Easy, crazy. Well, we have more clues. We need to make another deduction. So, our clue is poisoning. So, Montague Dunn inhaled a virulent vegetal poison that was intended to kill him. And he was trapped in the colonial collection. being trapped he was poisoned it's murder hmm this is our task list find the plant that was used to kill him inspect the staff buildings find out who killed him we also need to head back to Baker Street and check out all the plants the list of the plants that were stolen which is the reason we came here in the first place although to me, it's so far less interesting. Go to the archives. Buy what? Encyclopedias? Maybe? For rare plants instead of newspapers? Oh, well, maybe newspapers. I don't know. A list of exotic stolen plants. Looking for? Not sure. Hormones, medicinal herbs, exotic plants, poisonous. Maybe that one. Um. The very first one that's on the list of what was stolen. Deadly plant was stolen. Used to poison him. Killers may be those who stole the exotic plants, including the deadly species from the last exhibit at Kew Gardens. Hey, kiddo. Alright, so now we're going back to the gardens to talk to the staff.
goodness, I feel like it's taking forever to load. Come on. There we go. Knows about any of this. Mr. Hamish. Can you explain to us what happened to the Colonial Collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the Deputy Director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. <laughs> Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late Director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. <laughs> As Deputy Director, how was your relationship with Montague Dunn? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, a great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. <laughs> so after all, it was no wonder perhaps that he ended up like that. If you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You lifestyle. mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Alright, so now we're going to take a quick, glance, quick glance, glance at him and be able to, you know, tell like his whole life story. that Sherlock does. Super dirty. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Locked. Locked. Why? Locked. Probably locked too, isn't it? Ah, oh, yes, open. Yay. 